Welcome back to another skateboarding channel. This is a drop in. How's it going, um, fellas? Good boys, how are you? Uh, it's good to uh, see you all, man. Nice to see you yeah. back around, Tom. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm well excited. I'm very excited about today, mate. So Tom's been yeah. uh yeah. Tom's been working his magic and has found us a wonderful guest, mate. I'll pass it over to you to introduce the man, Tom. Uh, well, kind of started our uh, last episode there where you guys had uh Anthony on and uh the man himself met our guest for today uh we'll just jump right into it we have manuel herrera aka mowgli for everybody that doesn't know him here he is yeah welcome man thank you so much for joining hey, us dude. what's up everyone how's it going Things yeah good grand. man appreciate it dude yeah, yeah man we good. really appreciate you taking the time to come and speak to us today man been watching all your videos recently mate and you're i've got to say mate some of the stuff you get up to is insane brother i was watching Thanks, you bro. earlier this morning you uh doing the ollie off that aeroplane wing man <laughs> oh yeah that must have been That's crazy in that's in yeah. Arizona. I can't imagine that. The whole thing must have been like bouncing uh, all over the shop. Yeah, when I landed, it went, it felt like it was going down, but it was just like, since, you know, you're heavier and then you're, the momentum of going forward, it's like just kind of teeter totter. It felt like a teeter totter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's but, crazy. Like, fun, man. I don't know if I'd be up for that sort of thing, though, mate. It's a bit brave for me. <laughs> Are you Australian? <laughs> To me, yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. He's Australian. I'm from the UK, and Tom's okay. United States. Yeah, oh, yeah, nice, nice. Worldwide, yeah. baby. Oh yeah, we're all over the place. And then we have another guy that comes on that's from uh, Scotland, right? That's where Graham's from. Yeah. And then yeah. another one from Canada, also. So yeah. we got guys um, all over the place. Yeah, and Logan from <laughs> Northern Ireland. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's it, man. Cool, Trying man. to be one big worldwide happy family, you know. That's right. I was meaning to uh, listen to Anthony's uh, pod. He sent it to me, and I just got swamped with like editing some videos and then going skating and setting up a new board and whatnot. And then it's just like I wanted to listen. And then he, before I knew it, y'all reached out, and I was like, "Oh, should I? I, I can't. Like, I didn't even get to listen to his to get like a feel of what it was gonna be. So it's like I'm just in it now. That's nice. so cool, man. <laughs> no, we appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's a no pressure kind of podcast. We kind of just, you know, we we just roll with it. You know what I'm saying? We don't have a real script or anything like that. It's it's more just, you know, like minded people. We got the same interests, so you know, we just drop in and have a chat, man. That's all. Yeah, that's all it is, man. Yeah, so let's get a uh, yeah, just a little background on it. So uh, where did you like originally grow up? Uh, Bakersfield, Bakersfield, California. Bakersfield. It's like yeah. two hours north of LA. What was the skating scene like over there when you were growing up? Um, very small, and it's still very small. Uh, it's more of like everyone kind of knows who everyone is, honestly. It's really nice, yeah. honestly. And then you just see, like, uh, growing up, there wasn't really that many parks. There was only one park. And as soon as it hit, like, 2010, my local got built. It's like a plastic park with, like, metal ramps and plastic and uh one flat bar which is like literally it's home my favorite place in the world because it's just very simple and it has everything i need to kind of um improve and skate not only that i see a lot of locals there and i just get to like see <coughs> people that uh, i don't usually get to see on my everyday uh um life especially nowadays like I, i'll see more people that i would see 10 years ago or like B between now and 10 years like they pop up and then it's nice to uh, conversate with them and see how they are and what they're doing with their life 
it's pretty amazing yeah it's really important to reconnect with friends man skateboarding is a great way of doing that if you've got someone at home there you people at home you've got someone that you haven't seen for 10 years ring them man go for a skate meet these people it's always worth it isn't it yeah yeah it's not just about making new friends skateboarding Sometimes it's, it's actually better as you get older and you go for a skate with them. Like now, when you're all older, you have a lot more fun that I find anyway. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm 29 and I just recently turned 29, like uh, last month. Happy birthday, so, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and um, the thing that I realized is I appreciate it so much when I'm skating because like I didn't, I took a few days off because um, I, I kept landing on my truck right here on the arch of my uh, foot and like it caused it to kind of feel very, very sore for a few days because I was like trying to land this trick and it was just like a repetitive motion of landing like this over and over to the point where I was like, dang, this actually hurts. And then the next day it was sore. I just took a few days off and then I'm like thinking I should go skate and like it, it doesn't hurt that much. It's just like I barely feel it. And I was just thinking, do I even know what I'm doing? Like, and, and like, I'm nervous. I'm like creating all this crazy stuff in my brain, all this anxiety. I'm like, just chill, just go ride the board. And, and it's just like, um, it's, I appreciate it that much more, even when it's like more days are um, taken than me doing it, because it just reminds me how much I love it. And it's, it's pretty crazy. I like, I was uh, Friday, I went to this place called Slab City and it's pretty, that place is insane itself. It's just like a lawless place. People call it the last free place. Uh, and it's just a bunch of individuals that want to be free and away from like uh, society, how it is right now. And there was a, there was a place that they call it skate park. The, the sign said skate park. So I'm going to just call it the skate park as well. So the Slab City skate park um, has like this gnarly Euro thing and, it's huge, isn't it? I, yeah, mm. it, was, it felt like a, a launch. I was like, dude, this is crazy. But, but wasn't it like the ramps as well, like real, real soggy and all that as well? Full of holes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So just even skating that was, that was the only thing me and my friends skated that day on Friday. And yeah. although that was the only thing, we were more just adventuring in that we happened to run across that. And whenever I was skating that, and I was just like, damn this feels really good. Like it wasn't, in, this trip wasn't intended to skate, but now I'm skating and it makes me feel that much more happier. And like, even just landing tricks, I was just like laughing and smiling. I was like, this is what it is. Like, that's what it's this about. Is what skate- yeah. This is what skateboarding is about. Like just yeah. genuinely being happy and skating with your friends and just mm-hmm. smiling and laughing. So mm-hmm. 100%. I always say, I know it's cheesy, mate, but the best skateboarder in any park is the one smiling the most, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I truly believe that, mate. And uh, some days, you know, I go to the park and like, I, I not even do any tricks, man. Just get in a bowl and just fly around the walls. And it's so f- bloody fun in it. It's freeing. It opens mm. you up, man. You don't, you don't need to always be pushing it and doing tricks or putting pressure and stress on yourself. You just take it easy, go out, enjoy yourself. and yeah. You're only trying to skate better than yourself yesterday anyway, even if you are trying to push it in you. Well, it's different for you because you're a pro now. Congratulations again, mate. Oh, thank you. You're I a pro skateboarder that. now, huh? Officially. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, that's awesome. crazy itself too. I'll say this. Look, the internet can be a place where they'll just tear you out no matter what. Like, um, <laughs> I, I made a video where it's like, uh, uh, I called it. The title was my first pro uh, board setup. So like me just setting up and answering questions from my Instagram and there's some comments in there that just people just eat you alive. They're like, you know, you're not a real pro. And I was like, then what's the de- what <laughs> my whole life? And like, what's I'm the definition of a real pro? Like, yeah, so professional I mean you get paid up. for something in it, surely. <laughs> I yeah. So I want to bring this up, legit, like 100. percent I've asked so many pros, what does it mean to be pro? Because I want the legit answer. I want to know. Uh, if I'm on that right path and what can I do to make it as legit as possible? Because like, I already know that there's so many like skaters in my generation, not so much uh, in the generation coming up right now, like, cause we're in the age of the internet and like, 
it's like kind of you, you you're starting to see a lot more skaters that are doing youtube and like social media wise and it's not so much like 2015 vibes where everyone's like what are you doing you're talking to your camera da, 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 that's weird now fast forward six years later it's like that's what everyone's doing and yep. it, it's it's insane uh that mm -hmm. in 2016 like actually 2015 of christmas i decided to like take a uh, youtube very serious and like like okay this is what i'm gonna do i see uh john hill doing it and i see uh Luis mora i see lamont hole these are the only ones like that i really was seeing also chris chan and garrett jenner like mm -hmm. these are like the main skaters that i was seeing put a push out like youtube content with skateboarding and what i was thinking to myself was like if this is how they're making uh success with skateboarding i'm gonna do it this way because i've tried for 10 years of my life to go the the core route and yeah, every time I was seeing that footage, yeah it, I tried I really did I, I I would get footage I would try and it, obviously maybe my footage wasn't the best I didn't have the filmers I didn't know the connections whatever it may be so I decided to do YouTube started doing that that itself was taking a while it wasn't until 2019 when Nigel Alexander uh we're good friends at this point he recommended me to braille and through that i found success but i still credit doing youtube to where i am now because had i not been making youtube videos i wouldn't have met nka i wouldn't yeah. have had that opportunity to be introduced to braille and to bring it back it's uh i've asked like a pro skater neen williams i, I asked him hey do you, what in your opinion what does it mean to be pro and he told me you know um you put in your hours you you, you put in your time with skateboarding uh and he brought up the reference like you know that re uh, that example people say like you put in ten thousand hours of something and you're a master at it or, or so and so he brought up that and I, it, it kind of was like a i don't want to say it was an easy cop out for him to say that but it was like <laughs> I still didn't get the answer, but I understand. Yeah. And he's like, you yeah. basically make, and then he just said, you're basically making money off uh, what you're doing. And I want to let people know that I'm doing the best I can to represent what a professional is, whether it may be like kids want to take a photo. I'll take a photo with them. I'll say, what's up? I'll, I'll like answer their questions right there. And then not only that, I'm also like a street skateboarder. I love street skateboarding. Like you may see me in videos where i'm constantly in a warehouse but that mm. does not mean that that's my life that just means like i was there and i filmed like five videos in one day and it gets distributed within a, a week two weeks however it may be yeah. so it, it it may look like that's my life but my life is i'm out skating the streets i'm challenging myself and not only that i'm very critical and sometimes i don't even want to show what i did in the streets because i I don't think it was good enough and I need to hold myself to the best standards that I can. And once again, I always struggle with the question, what is a pro? Like legit, what is a pro? Like, do I have to grind a 20 stair rail? Then will I be accepted as a pro? Do I have to skate a 16 stair? Is that me being a pro? Like legit, what is a pro? Like, is it just the core industry? accepting me as a pro like is that really it like what what is the actual answer so when people came into the comment section for that video and i was just doing it for like my instagram followers because they were asking like hey can you do this video like we want to we want to set we want to see you set up that board because we've been following you for a long time and i appreciate them like so much because like without the people i would not be nothing and yeah uh i was i made it posted it and then i got those hurtful comments like yeah you are pro in the sense you make money that doesn't mean you have the talent and i was like i feel like people don't understand that i've been skating for so long i've been filming for so long and the people that are easy to like go ahead and comment they won't go back and look at your previous video parts or your your previous works because like i've like mm -hmm. made perhaps like seven to eight video parts n not under a company which is 100 percent cool mm. like it's not legit because it wasn't for so-and-so's brand 
but it was a yeah. video part that I put like time and effort into. So mm -hmm. yeah. to end, to end this big long rant, I knew that it was going to happen. Like I knew I was going to get like some sort of backlash because, um, that, that was coming up. So I decided to grab all my 2019 and 2020, like everything that I've filmed up to this point and put it together into a video part. And it's like, this is what I've done with my vlogging life, like outside of Braille and just me, like, this is what I've done. And I put out like a six minute <laughs> part, which is like, and I still had a lot more footage, but it's just like, nah. But I just did that whole long thing because it's like, this is basically what I've done my, with my whole life with YouTube within 2019 and uh, 2020, 2021, my bad. I've mm -hmm. previously made two other full lengths prior to this full length. So yeah. I made three full lengths. There's a lot of core skaters that will never make full lengths in their life. Like, and I'm not talking about film a part, but I'm talking about film your friends, <laughs> edit the full length of their part put a song to their songs so how much chord do you need me to be mm. yeah you know you, you're doing it not just for yourself but you're doing it for your friends you're doing it for the community you know you, that that is a big thing not to kind of jump in the middle of it but like i've always seen you as just being a very humble kind of dude and it seems like exactly what you said like you're always willing to give back to people you're trying to set that example for the young kids coming up and all that kind of stuff and that's aside from being with braille not even not even having to do with that in itself but just you in general as a person i've always just kind of you know i've had that vibe from you know, just from all your videos the way that you are the way you present yourself and me personally i i 100 percent would say you are what i would put as a standard for a pro so yeah like you know, Nate williams, opinion, but you know as Nate williams told you like you put in to, like he described a pro as putting in the work putting in the hours yeah you've put in you've just that. as much hours and just as much work as what a pro would do so you just went to a different platform if that makes sense yeah like you've still done what is required class you as a normal pro you know i, I was think. listening i was uh, sorry to cut <laughs> off. I, was, I was listening to um it's i think it's called the the garage tapes or something like that with mark johnson it's like a two hour long uh talk with him and uh michael burnett and the one thing that i i when i was listening i was like dang he's saying a lot of good things and then boom he says uh the people that couldn't make it the traditional route went ahead and formed another way so they could be pros and when he said that i didn't know if he was saying it as in like he respected it or not and yeah. i was just like well the thing is he's aware of this so people are aware that there's other routes. Mm. I think it's all just so new, my friend. I mean, mm. in the music industry, similar stuff happened when uh, electronic music started to happen and it was all pumping out and all of a sudden musicians were like, oh man, that's not real music. You know, you've done that in a different way. But over a little bit of time and a generation later, it just becomes normal and all this bitchiness will be gone, man. It will. It'll yeah. disappear. Cause that's all it is. It's, it's anal bitchiness and it's just pointless, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> The truth is, though, but when you go out skateboarding, yeah, you're, you, you get heckled by people you don't know. Some people look at you like you're shit because you're, you're skateboarding. And when did it ever bother you? When did you ever care what any of those people ever thought about any of it? So why no, start yeah, caring just, now? I yeah, think you know what just, I mean? People will look at yeah, you like a I skateboarder think, and they judge you. And uh, who cares? Good for them. I mean, right now I don't care. But Good. the reason why it cared was, Cause it was right as I posted that video on my own channel. I was like, what the heck? Aren't you supposed to like, if you're watching my video, aren't you supposed to like be a supporter or something? Like if you don't agree with whatever's going on, you can just unsubscribe or just like net block me, whatever you need. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't gotta let me like put on like what you feel like. Obviously I don't believe in that because like, there's a lot of stuff I do that I don't talk about. I don't post it. Like, Yesterday, for instance, uh, the little homie, he's nine. I gave him wheels. 
And then my friend, as I was going to leave the park, he tried to hard flip the, the park six, his board snapped. And I was going to give it to him, but he asked me before I could give him my board that I was writing. I was like, oh, you, yeah, definitely. Well, I was going to already give it to you. And then not only that, I, anytime I have spare boards, I just give them to the like anyone at the local because they are like, I want to make sure that they don't feel what I felt whenever I was at the park and my board broke or someone mm. saw my board and it was the yeah. crappiest. And it was like, I'm like in fear that I'm not going to skate next week. And I just mm. want to make sure that people are like, good. Like, oh, I want y'all to skate because like you are the future. You are like, who knows where this nine year old's going to be in three years like he could be doing some good stuff i see him he's skating all like off the quarter pipe which is uh taller than me and i'm like dang like you're just alling it for a warm-up and i'm like i don't even want to ollie that right now <laughs> so, you, you know what though it's funny he's like if you hadn't been there to give him those wheels or give someone that board that was that might have been it for them like they might have just gone home and gone oh yeah. well, whatever like you now have just paved another step for them to keep going. You know what I mean? Like yeah. being a kid and, you know, especially through these times, it's things are tough and man, it's like, it's hard to keep that money on board to do what you want to do with it. So especially you know, in these times. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. hundred percent. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for the rant. I just, oh. I'm it's ran away, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's great, you know, it's good to this get is what we do. Out. We ran, man. Yeah, it's good to have a little We're bit of a talk, you know, just, just, you know, real conversation about, you know, day-to-day -day life and, you know, yeah. back to our, like, beginning part of that whole conversation, you know, it's definitely you had to build your foundation by doing this, and I definitely agree with that, that all those steps that you made with, like, transitioning towards youtube and doing all that kind of stuff definitely set you up you know that that was your foundation to get where you are now so you know mm. i'd say definitely you know stick stick to your roots you know definitely keep doing what you're doing with you know everything just you know keep being you is pretty much what it comes down to yeah and, um i think my favorite thing about like have transitioning to making youtube videos was breaking how awkward i i was versus now being very confident on like the camera and like knowing what I'm saying and just like not really caring if someone's next to me and like I'm talking to the screen when it's just a camera. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that was very powerful because that's when I was like, okay, I don't care anymore. I have to really be myself because if I'm not myself, someone on the other screen is gonna see, is like feel it and like, oh yeah, this guy's kind of. Yeah. Eh. I was gonna show you something, right? But my local skate park, we've got this guy called Quinn, yeah? I'm just going to show you a few little clips. Tell me what you think of this stuff, right? Uh, and this dude is super oh! consistent as well. Really good guy. Oh, he's that's good. Good. Yeah. yeah, he's mm. super humble, super friendly bloke, like, really positive, and he absolutely shreds, mate. Yeah. Are you said you live in the UK? Yes, mate. I'm just uh, north of London. Are you close to that park under the brick, like under, I don't know what it's called, but Royal Oak. it's like, it's like a lot of people skated. Yeah, so mate. Under, under a bridge, Royal Oak. Meanwhile, yeah, too, yeah the Gonzo Gap, we call it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's a cool Dang, place. Dang, wow. Yo. Yeah, Quinn's got the lines, man. Literally shreds. This, have you seen this park as well? This is called Oxy Activity Skate Park, yeah? It's a new one in Watford, where I live. We've got five massive parks in one field. Mm. Like, no yeah, joke. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen you do some footage there before. Look at this blunt. I could spend all day on those. Ooh. All day. Man, Quinn is so damn good. Amazing. Hell did I think? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, mate. He's savage, isn't he? Yeah, it's so good. He's going to go somewhere, man, yeah. I swear. He's got so much steez. <laughs> Quinn, if you're watching this, Quinn might even be watching it. If you are watching it, man, keep going. You're sick, bro. For sure. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, mate. Talking to six skaters, I've got one other one to show you as well. You guys are subscribed yeah. to him. Don't know if you've heard of him, Mowgli, but his, uh, his name is Ken McLean. This dude, he's got 
like robot style. Then I really like everything it does, even if it's simple. Yeah. It just yeah, that was good. Do you know what I mean? Even if he doesn't land, even if he doesn't land perf, if if he doesn't land perfectly straight, somehow he still manages to sort of stay locked yeah. and roll mm. away without any tic tac or anything. And I don't get how he does. I love that. how he sessions up in his garage. Wow. Yeah, that was all through yeah. lockdowns, wasn't it? All this. Yeah. Not being able to go. But out. he learns a lot of his stuff in his garage and then takes it out to the parks like that. Oh, that's wow, ideal. that was good. Mm. Yeah, that's what it's funniest part, Mowgli, with all this is literally this guy was like one of all of our very first subscribers, pretty much, like within yeah. our first five. Yeah, all of us. Yeah. We subscribed to all of us like shortly apart from each other. So that that's kind of how we all met was through YouTube and stuff. So yeah, actually, you know, that's actually a really good thing you bring up. Um, some of my closest friends aside, like my um, friends here in Bakersfield, I swear, I, I don't know how I would see my life without some of my friends that I've met through YouTube. Like um, yeah. my friend Jay. My friend Ipe, uh, Brian, I, I'm sure you all know who Brian is. And, and, various, yeah. Yeah, and various other creators that I've met. But these are some of like my closest friends now that I, I do my best to like see them once or twice a month. Because like they live in L.A. so I have to go a little further. But like just being around them and like the energy, I think it's crazy that the internet has... Uh, brought me some close friends because without those friendships it would feel strange I feel like um, almost going into the journey now knowing that because of uh, the adventures we've gone on it's like insane like the, some of their it's their ideas I would have never been prone to going or like traveling um, first time I ever met my friend Ipe was through YouTube and then we met in person in japan uh, we both flew there and we met each other at the airport it was crazy that's, cool. that's amazing <laughs> that's sick yeah we, we, we all met through youtube man and it's like you know ever since meeting these boys like everything's been just you know that much more fun and like all like-minded and you know it's yeah, cool it stupid. Man. Fun, yeah man. yeah so didn't you meet adventures like and skateboarding thing. when you was on uh, was it vietnam Anthony um, from um, Adventures in Skateboarding at 40 Plus. Actually, that's crazy. Cause, like the following year, oh yeah, and Anthony, like I still keep up with him. Uh, we met in 2019, South Korea. So I went out there oh, with South my Korea. friend. Yeah, yeah we, we, we were thinking like, because I had gone to Japan in 2018 and I was like, that was my first time ever like traveling, like on plane and out of the country as well. And I was just thinking to myself, wow, I got to do this as much as possible. And every year I have to go out somewhere. It doesn't matter where I need to just go. And then one of my friends that uh, I would also talk to from Japan, uh, she recommended me like, hey, you should go to South Korea if you like Japan. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll do some research. And then the once January of 2019 hit of uh I started like looking up Instagram accounts of people and just like kind of messaging random people. Uh, I met this Cody, he's in the army. And I told him, yo, I'm going to South Korea in May. Uh, would, it would be cool if you could like help me go around or like show me places. Uh, he's the person that connected me and the sergeant and we met at a skate shop. And then from there we went to a skate park. Like we just pushed, I don't know, I think it was like, 15, 20 minutes away from uh, the skate shop, Savior Skate Shop. So once we went there, uh, I was like talking to him and then just his perspective on getting skaters back into skating after like, it don't matter, like it'd be 30s, 40s or however old. And once he told me that he had gone like 40 to 50 skaters back into skating just because he's posting his progression, I was like, that's amazing. That's so cool. And then not only that, he was just talking to me like his future goals and then just like um, the army. And it was just nice to talk to him. Uh, and then seeing his progression, I filmed him do a 5-0 on the box. That was really cool. So 
connecting with people once you meet them it's like it, it it's cool you just keep going further and further like into that's right wherever your journey is like taking you and it's we still keep in touch like on instagram he'll send me his new videos and i'll watch him and like he sent me this his like interview and i still haven't watched it and i need to watch it so <laughs> So I'm holding, I'm holding myself accountable because, like, I want to know, what he, <laughs> like, what he says and his ideas. Because, like, I've, oh, I'm always interested in like, uh, people that are much, oh, like, older than me and how they keep themselves together and how they still think about skateboarding. Like, what's possible? Um, for example, Guy Mariano just had like a life video on the barracks, and I watched that whole thing and I left so inspired because the, I think some of his end words before like his video part played were um he just wants to skate he wants to keep making video parts he just wants to uh keep doing what he loves and he was bringing up how uh just because he's older doesn't mean that he's out or he's quitting and just because someone's new and they're hot and they're trending doesn't mean that he's trying to compete with them he just wants to keep making video parts and like keep skating and doing what he loves and i was like that's so true I love that. And he said, and if I can do anything to inspire more skaters to keep going into their older years, then I'll be happy to do that. And I was like, yes, I love that. I'm hyped. And mm -hmm. it's just amazing, man. <clears throat> like, I think without skateboarding, I wouldn't be exactly who I am <laughs> today because, like, I've gotten a lot of confidence. I've gotten a lot of, like, or goal-oriented um and staying true to my path like if i want to go to i don't know randomly if i want to drive to new york right now i would do it california to new york and i'd make it happen and that's because like that's the goal that's the idea and like i can't do anything until that's done and that's the same thing how i approach skateboarding if i'm like learning a trick i can't do anything else i cannot like like i'll start like freaking out like mentally and just like i'll start feeling like no i'm like in this spot right now like mentally like it's there like i can do it it could be any moment and like if i step out realistically i'm like oh i could come back but like when you're in that hot spot and you're like feeling that burning passion it's mm -hmm. insane like you literally feel like it could happen any moment and that's that's the best almost almost i say that almost because it's like a double-edged sword like it can happen but at the same time you can like feel like oh i didn't land it like over and over so yeah yeah it, it's you, you build yourself up and then you get knocked down a little bit and then you got to build it up again and it's mm. all for that you know five ten seconds of of euphoria and glory you know and yeah, yeah you, you definitely are the same it. way when i get stuck in certain tricks like it's really hard for me to walk away from them without actually landing it and i body myself i will destroy myself trying <laughs> to fucking land these tricks and with all my injuries over the years it's not really the smartest thing to do because then i hate myself for three days after that but oh it's just so something funny. about something about getting that satisfaction of putting in a real hard battle with something and then finally getting it i mean nothing really compares to it so i actually um was thinking about some of the things that i was doing like 10 years ago and i was like how was i doing that without like really <laughs> like without really sitting back and thinking like about the consequences because uh i think for two weeks straight these past weeks like it was uh i was so sore every day and I was just thinking, damn, bro, like, why am I getting sore so fast? And I was like, oh, well, I'm skating every day. And you're getting and older like, every day, bro. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, my yeah. gosh. Like, I'm over here trying to fight this. And I'm like, I, like I'm almost like, I, I think I was talking to uh, Ricky about this. I, I told him, okay, why is it that it's so hard once I'm sore and I have to move around so, like, little for, like, 15 to 20 minutes before i'm able to like feel warmed up and not sore but then the minute i stop for like four minutes or two minutes i go back to being sore and i'm just like oh that that's like so painful that's and worst, i was like man. yeah and i was like dang it's like, pain break yourself pain. <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty much that's how my warm-up session is almost every time i go out it's like i gotta freaking warm myself up for 
a half an hour just to get the knees moving and get the ankles moving. And then if I stop for more than like five minutes, it's fucking game over. Takes me a while to so, loosen up. I'm nearly 40. Like once, once I'm warmed up, it's like, let's just keep it going here. Let's keep going. Game of skate, you know, whatever, dude. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Guys, I'm just going to cut in here real quick. This is from Alter Skateboards. It's an online skateboard shop that will ship internationally anywhere in the world. And if you want to get 10% off of any products, head over to their website. It's www.alterskateshop.co.uk. Put in the promo code CHATSKATE10 and get 10% off. Cool, yeah. So head on over to there if you need to get any new supplies. Nice one. Yeah, but skateboarding, mate, it's so much fun. But like all four of us are dads, aren't we? You know, like, oh, yeah. it's so hard to find the time to skate for me personally. Because like, I'm a single dad, I'm bringing up my daughter on my own. So I get opportunities sometimes during school hours to go and skate. But that's, that's it for me. That's my lot. Yeah. So I co-parent with his mom. And I, when I do take him to school, I have like a window of um, eight o'clock till two o'clock. And usually what I've been doing with that time is like if I do go skate, but if I do have to like edit videos or something like for my own personal channel, then I have no choice but to stay and like edit it. But it feels good because it's like, all right, cool, get it done. And then when he when I get him, it's just like, all right, all, all eyes on you now. Yeah, it's definitely hard juggling that in when you, when, I mean, I'm, well, let's see, three, three out of four of us are doing the single parent lifestyle. Obviously, Twitchy, though, you have not just your own, but Sarah's as well. So, yeah, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely hard trying to figure out the time in between, you know, especially when school starts up and all that, just, mm -hmm. you know. Trying to keep that balance of the life and, you know, the home life, the parent life, the skate life, like trying to mix it all together and shit. I'm so, just trying to yeah. figure out a way to get my girls into skateboarding. You know, there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. I mean, I take them to the skate park. We, we go down there with <laughs> other people that have got kids as well that are skating. And yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I've got my daughter trying to, she loves, she loves the idea of skateboarding. But as soon as she puts the board down and the idea of standing on it, she's, that's it. Yeah, she's running. I feel so. it. Same. Can, can Same. I tell you a story, Mowgli? It's actually yeah. funny because what got my kids into skating was because I had a, a little blind deck, like the little tiny one for toddlers that I bought my older son. And um, they're out the front playing around and then they got on YouTube and typed skateboarding and what came up was Braille. So, like, that was, like, their starting point of, like, I want to go and get a skateboard. So I was like, yeah. oh, all right, cool. Well, that's sweet. And then I was like, man, no, I want to fucking do it too. Like, I want the fun as well. <laughs> you know? So I was like, sweet, I'm just going to do it. And, you know, it was like, I, and I don't regret it at all either. I was going to say, um, recently I've been thinking about, this is going to probably sound so cheesy, but Braille obviously is like PBS. Like for, mm. I don't know, for like, I don't know if you yeah, in the UK, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's like oh, I only know it from Bob Ross. And I was just thinking about, all right, I think I need to start like doing some research. So whenever I speak, I say something like, kind of like on the educational side of random facts, so I could throw it in there and like it could keep the kid entertained or like whoever's listening is like, wait, wait, what? And then like I go throw the trick or something because like usually that like people are kind of there for like the skating but they're also there for like after they they start getting attached to the personality they want mm. to um know more about the person and like what drives them to keep going so i've been thinking about it in that sense recently and i i don't know if that's like a good approach or if like or, or what or do i just keep doing what i'm doing all the time just keep doing what you're doing man just be who you are and just keep going, dude. Go with the flow. Be natural, What's mate. If it feels right. To suit anyone yeah. else. Like, you're doing it for you. So yeah. do you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like whatever whatever choices you seem to make, it seems to work. I mean, it's – you're just – you seem just genuine about what you're trying to do. And same with back to, like, with the kids. You like to kind of give them a little education and still be all day, you know jump right into throwing down and you know doing your what was it a uh, nolly big heel down the freaking down the three block there or whatever it was or no that was yeah. nolly nolly big right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you know you just kind of do your thing man man did you ever come to the uk to skate 
No, I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to do where, like, um, I go to, like, you can do all of them, like London to Paris, and I it goes to Italy too, right? Like the train. Oh yeah, yeah, you're a star. So I go work your way down. Yeah, I want to do something where uh, it could be with Braille or I don't know. They're always busy. They're trying to stay like on on schedule videos and like. Uh, but I would personally like if they wouldn't be willing to do it, then I would personally do it to where like I take two weeks and I just start off in London and like I organize it to like how I just go like a lot of Europe. And I would also want to go to Spain, like Spain is, like and go to Madrid. Dude, you have like, to go to Barcelona. If you come to Europe to skate and you're planning on, you, you have to go to Barcelona. Yeah, I'd probably honestly end there and then just catch the flight back. The whole home. city is a fucking skate park, probably. No shit. <laughs> The whole, the whole, the whole place is a skate park. Everywhere you go, banks, flat banks, ledges, stair sets, rails. Everywhere you go, Barcelona, mate, incredible place. If you Just skate, a little <laughs> paradise. Yeah. So that's that's like something that I would love to do. Honestly, uh, if I could figure it all out, and and I probably would probably do my best to do it next year. I don't know when the best time of the season is. So maybe like spring or summer. Yeah. So sort of March, April, May. Yeah. So that's early, early spring. Well, late spring, early summer. Mm. Yeah, it's lovely over here, mate. Though there's some beautiful parks. If you don't mind a bit of crust, that is though, because uh, it ain't as smooth as you're used to. I promise you that, mate. Around here. <laughs> I bet I've seen like uh, Tom Knox's video parts, and like they look rough, and I'm just like. <laughs> But that's what skating is. I want to feel it. I want to know what the other skaters have been going through and experiencing. I want to, like, have more respect than what I already have for them. I want to go hmm. through that. That's the real thing, I think. Like, when you skate what well, other skaters have been skating and you understand, like, oh, this is so, like, it's not what I thought it was. I no, you it don't was see the crack that's this wide, do you, on the camera? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's about two, two meters before you're about to pop down a massive stair set. And, like, duck. <laughs> Yeah, you try and get so, your feet set up there, mate. <laughs> I'm just yeah. trying to respect the skaters more. Uh, like when you go to uh, the East Coast here in America, boom, everyone knows it's so rugged and rough. And like, I want to know what it is in like uh, in, in Europe, like those spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, anytime you want to come out east, dude, I'm in Connecticut. I got a home base for you right here. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it all out. I would love. I that's actually like my biggest. Uh, goal like just being able to travel and skate like and somehow do incorporate doing good like that's been the biggest one um I, this one's kind of off topic but me and one of my friends want to bike from uh california to new york and uh, we already did mexico like the the border of mexico right there in san diego to the mm -hmm. golden gate uh back last year in november so it would be amazing to do <laughs> the whole country which is so crazy, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> hey, one step at a time, right? You can only do so much every day, so. Yeah. Uh, you, so you got big goals in mind, so. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pumped to see what you got in store for you now that now that it's it's official that you're pro, and I know that now more than ever you're probably wanting to, you know, keep your image. You know, you want to keep progressing, keep pushing. So I'm I'm hyped for what's to come next, man, for sure. So any big plans for uh, future edits or anything like that just on your own outside of Braille or are you going to be kind of chilling um, out after that last full movie you put out there? So I did pull out, so I put out a full length with my friends and all this was already footage from our YouTube journey. Everyone like when I would vlog and like just like outside of Braille, like just filming, going street skating and I just pushed it all together into like a 35 close to 40 minutes of a full length and I called it why and mm -hmm. I had this thing where it's like my first full length back in 2015 was called this is why and then uh I put out another full length in 2019 like as soon as the first day of January came like started I put out this the second full length called that's why that was just another full length with a different group of friends that were at the time, I didn't realize, like, how fun and amazing it was to 
be spending and like vlogging with all all the friends that would eventually have grown and gotten jobs and everyone just goes their separate ways and like i've experienced that with multiple friend groups already but to like have captured it all on video and like it's all in my like because like i was vlogging every day from like uh early 2017 to late 2018 and like capturing all that putting it into a full length it's just like a, it's honestly now i say it's nostalgia when it's like it's not even that far away but it's like I don't really see these people as much as I used to. And they're, mm -hmm. they're like people that live here in Bakersfield, but it's like everyone's busy doing their own thing. And it, it's almost like a, one of those feelings you get where it's like, damn, it just flew by like that. We didn't know what we were doing. But now I look back at that and it's like, it's all on video and it's all their individual vlogs. And then it's just one put together where it's like the best of the best, kind of like a montage, but that one's an hour long ran into George Lopez during that time. That was insane. We were skating and this was 28, this was 2018 in the summer. And we were in LA, downtown LA. We were skating a three stair at night, like night filming. And earlier that day, I told my friend, like anything happens in LA, you never know what will happen. Like you, you let's just go out and skate. And I don't think we were about to go skate either. Like it was like, we're on the fence. Like, should we go night skating? And we're like, yeah, let's go. Like, anything's going to happen. Like, it's something amazing. And boom. Like, it was, like, around 11 p.m., George Lopez just rocks out of nowhere. Like, I'm talking about we're on the street corner and <laughs> skating this three-stair. He pops up. He's like, all right, what you guys got? What do you guys got? Like, what are you going to do? What do you do? And he has his phone out ready to go. And he's filming. I think he was on Instagram Live, maybe. I don't know. And we're just – I was baffled. I was like, What? I was like, what? Oh, shit, all man. Of a sudden, you're like, holy shit, it's fucking George Lopez. Like, what? Yeah. So, go up to him, give him a hug, and then, like, we just start skating. And uh, I think this was, like, the craziest part ever. He might have been, like, drinking. Uh, I don't want to say, like, but he did. He, he kind of was. And he gave us his phone so we can put our Instagrams on his notes tab. And I was like, let's see. To this day, I think about it like, dude, we could have just followed ourselves on Instagram and like had a big flag screenshotted and all that. <laughs> I think, like, hey, hold on, we're gotcha. Yeah, but I think that's like still one of the craziest things that's ever happened. And it all comes back to like, well, this is all I've been doing, like just going out and constantly just filming, having fun with friends. And it's like now 2021. And it's like, uh, it's still some of that, but it's like, it, it sucks to say, but it has to be a little more organized because like everyone's on a crazy schedule. You got to figure out what times fit with everyone like or whoever you're going to go. Um, and those are some of like the best videos that I like making. So um, even recently, we, I went to Miami with friends and it was like very organized, but it worked out so well because like it was a group of like 10 people that just got an Airbnb and just like we're all our I'm going around Miami just skating so for future I just want to keep doing that as much as possible like keep filming keep making great vlogs with friends and like capturing these moments that are later on going to be deemed <clears throat> nostalgic because it's only going to keep going more and more and honestly I want to do a thing where I can help with like any kind of charities like give back in any sense it whether it means like I go places and like I skate for them or like, or if I go and speak for them, whatever it may be, like I want to just put myself out in that field and like help because I know that there's like a lot of communities that need that they, they, to bring awareness. What this is like yeah. skateboarding just came into the Olympics recently and it's done so well for like other countries. Like it's like not just this thing where we get seen as like, vandalism like where we do vandalism and it's more than that it's like something people will cope with like it's not like your average sport or if you want to call it a sport like where people just play ball and like they have to do teams skateboarding is an individual thing and through that people learn who they are because they spend time with that and <clears throat> I just 
would like to do as much as that as possible. And I, I just want to do things. Like, honestly, that's pretty really much it. Travel, do things, and be a part of anything. Like, anything. Yeah. Like, if I was, if I was know, told, oh, go to Africa. You know, you, know what's, you know what's even better, too, is that the fact that Andy Anderson sort of came up in the same direction as, as you did through um, NKA and all that sort of stuff. And he's actually, like, competed in the Olympics. So it just proves that anyone can can get it to that level, you know what I mean? Yeah. No matter which and, way you go. And NK is a big, uh, big part of, like, what I deem, like, uh, where I'm at right now. Because without him, I wouldn't be connected to Braille. So, like, I always, like, think – every time I see him in person, I just thank him. Like, hey, man, I just want to thank you. And I, that might be tiresome, but, like, I want him to know that I don't forget. And, like, I know that he had – the biggest part in where I am right now. So uh, NK is like the man for sure. Yeah. He seems like a really humble, like real down to earth dude too. Oh, uh, definitely. He, he gives yeah. some pretty damn good advice too. 